The 2020 election will have huge implications for the US political system, and not just due to the presidential race. 2020 is a census year, meaning in 2021, the US will have new electoral maps. Whichever party gains control of state legislatures in 2020 is gonna get to set district maps for a decade, which will decide control of the US House for a decade. In 2010, Republicans made huge gains in state legislatures and consequently redrew the maps. One study showed that about 16 to 17 Republican congressional seats won in the 2016 election are attributed to the way the electoral maps were drawn. You had gone through several cycles where Democrats had actually gotten more votes than Republicans nationwide, and yet Republicans had a comfortable majority, and that was because of, of gerrymandering. Gerrymandering is the process of manipulating electoral maps for political gain. In about two-thirds of the country, the state legislators who win their elections will draw the political playing field for the next 10 years. Gerrymandering is cheating. Uh, it is the act uh, of drawing legislative lines that put e yourself in power uh, and make it harder for the other side to win a majority of seats. Gerrymandering is the reason that some congressional districts look downright strange. Look at these. They make no logical geographical sense. For 200 years, this has been going on where the legislators draw the district lines to protect their jobs. The most toxic partisan gerrymandering that took place after the 2010 census in this most recent cycle, um, it occurred in states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Florida, this time around, both parties are more focused on this strategy and are racing hundreds of millions of dollars for down-ballot races. Redistricting has increasingly become this huge war um, between the parties um, because I think both parties now are aware of, of this and you, know, you see a lot of money flooding into the process. Both sides of the aisle have used redistricting for their own gain, especially as technologies improve and automate the process of map making leading to gerrymanders based on race, political affiliation, and even prison populations. So how does gerrymandering actually work? And what is being done to fight for fair representation? The total population results of the decennial census determines how many congressional seats each state will have. After the 2010 census, 32 states kept the same number of seats, while 8 states gained seats and 10 states lost seats. Once states know how many congressional seats they will have, state legislators begin redistricting their communities and determine the shapes of electoral maps. Traditionally, gerrymandered maps have been redrawn using census and voter registration data to pack as many people from one party or racial group into a district. Alternatively, legislators make crack districts part so that certain populations are divided according to whom they are likely to support. All of it is effectively vote a dilution. Um, it makes votes matter less Map makers have expanded from drawing maps based on census and voter registration data to include as much data as they can find. They will use things like voter registration records, um, but not only voter registration records, much more sophisticated data about who you are and what your political preferences are, using things like what magazines you read, um, what kind of car you drive, you know, uh, you know, all kinds of consumer data, the same sort of data that companies use to target you, that camp political campaigns use to target you, uh, you could develop a very robust profile of who a person is, um, and that's the sort of data that, that enables map makers to strategically draw maps to uh, favor one party um, over the other or, or, and, and to, to make it durable. In 2010, Republican leadership took a big gamble on down-ticket elections to attempt to influence the map-making process. The Republican State Leadership Committee launched the Redistricting Majority Project, or REDMAP, investing $30 million to flip state legislative seats. At the beginning of 2010, Republicans held 44% of all state legislative seats, 28% of state legislative chambers, and had control of both state legislative chambers and the governorship in nine state trifectas. With that investment, Republicans flipped nearly 700 state legislative districts, giving them 53% of seats, a 9% increase. When it came to control of state legislatures, they won 51% of them and had 20 state trifectas, both an increase of 23%. It was the biggest and boldest investment in modern American politics, and it, it paid off wildly and successfully. That shift allowed Republicans to control redistricting in many parts of the country, some of which led to gerrymanders. We know from history that both parties are, are equally willing to gerrymander if given the opportunity. It just turned out that the last round of, of redistricting in 2011 occurred after the 
Tea Party election of 2010s, in which Republicans did really well and swept the board in many states. But we're given a chance. Democrats will also gerrymandered. Requests for comment from the RSLC were not returned by the date of publication, but some conservative experts suggest that gerrymandering is not a matter of politics, but rather geography. They say while the maps may appear distorted, the district's maps reflect the population concentrations required in the Voting Rights Act. For example, in some states, Democrats tend to be more concentrated in urban areas and Republicans are more spread out. This cycle, the RSLC is focusing their efforts on 12 state legislatures, the same number of states the National Democratic Redistricting Committee is focusing on. Gerrymandering has led to some crazy looking districts. This one in Illinois has been named the Earmuffs. Some have named this one in Maryland after Reptar from the Rugrats. This one in Pennsylvania, some say looks like Goofy kicking Donald Duck. And this one in Massachusetts, considered the original gerrymander in 1812, was satirized as resembling a mythical salamander. Even a font has been created from gerrymandered districts to bring attention to the issue. Maps like these have made it so that after the 2018 midterms, North Carolina Republicans edged out Democrats 51 to 49 percent, but won 10 out of the 13 U.S. House seats were about 77%, a lopsided win that led state courts to rule that the state had to redraw their maps. Pennsylvania, another swing state, Republicans drew the map so that it had they had a 13-5 advantage of the congressional delegation. And you can argue about like what the exact split should be, but no one, I think, you know, if you went to the average person on the street and said, like, hey, should 13 congressional districts in, in um, Pennsylvania be a Republican, they would say no, because the, Pennsylvania is not that Republican of a state. And yet that's that's the sort of Thing that happens. Complicating matters even more, in July 2020, the Trump administration moved to try to omit undocumented immigrants from the census apportionment count, which could lead to states with high immigration numbers like Texas and California to lose seats in Congress and billions in federal dollars. But that's not the only move worrying experts and advocates. What the administration really is doing is setting the table for a decade of misrepresentation in the country. Um, and it's not only at the federal level and at the congressional level, we're talking about state legislatures here as well. What you have are a number of state legislatures, um, especially across the uh, Midwest and the South, that are talking about drawing their state legislative maps in the next decade based on citizen voting age population that would be gleaned from a count like this rather than using the long time standard of total population. In a state like Texas, in a state like Georgia, this could have the impact of making these states appear older, whiter, more conservative, and more rural. Moreover, the more than 1.5 million people in American prisons are not allowed to vote and are counted where they're incarcerated as opposed to where they lived before. The general theory is that the Constitution requires a minimum that maps have equal numbers of people. And what prison-based gerrymandering does is it allows these rural white communities to satisfy that they have enough people in their communities, but to do so on the backs of black people of color. While some states have moved to eliminate this kind of gerrymander, opponents of these reforms suggest that the places where these prisons are located need the resources for the services they provide. There have been multiple Supreme Court cases where racial gerrymandering has been deemed unconstitutional. In 2018 and 19, the court took up four cases on political gerrymanders, where it ruled that partisan gerrymandering claims present political questions beyond the reach of the federal courts, but that Congress and states could make laws to prevent it. These decisions aren't the only ones directly and indirectly affecting the way maps are drawn. In 2013, a 5-4 decision did away with a key provision of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 that freed nine states to change their election laws without advanced federal approval. Texas, since the 70s, every cycle after redistricting had to be conducted, they've always got in trouble for discriminatory maps. Similarly for Louisiana, similarly problems in Georgia, similarly problems in the places where uh, the provision of the Voting Rights Act mobilized in 2013 was functioning to scrutinize redistricting maps. That Supreme Court ruling led states to impose laws and practices that had been struck down in the past. In North Carolina, this applied to the HB 589 law, dubbed the Monster Law by opponents. This was a law that had a photo ID requirement 
It cut early voting in the state, ended pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds. It ended same day voter registration. So it had this, all of these provisions, provisions which it held um, because it knew that they weren't going to get pre-cleared through the heart of the Voting Rights Act. Activists suggest that Congress could step in with legislation to restore this provision. We need a restored Voting Rights Act. We need the re Section 5 process to be fully functional. A reform movement has been growing as Americans learn more about the impacts of gerrymandering. You know, the common quip in, in you know, reform uh, campaigns, which has proven to be really successful for anybody trying to get reform, is that, um, you know, voters should pick politicians, not politicians pick their voters. State legislatures control redistricting for congressional districts in 31 states. In recent years, several states have moved away from this practice by enacting different types of commissions. When commissions draw maps, they're charged with doing things like keeping communities of interest together. And so, um, and they're prohibited from looking at political data. Eight states have some sort of independent commission that draws congressional plans, whether it be an advisory commission that draws maps that legislatures vote on, or strictly independent commissions which draw and approve maps. In five states in 2018, you had uh, citizen initiatives um, and constitutional amendments take this on. It's a sign that people desperately want an end to this. People want their politics back. Four states use political appointee commissions and three states use a backup commission when there isn't a consensus in the legislatures or when a governor vetoes a map. Almost anything is better than having a legislature, particularly a legislature that is under the control of one party, draw maps because when the redistricting process is controlled by one party, that party has every incentive to go to town and to you know, maximize their advantage. Better maps are easier than ever, since today's technology has given map makers incredible amounts of data to work with. Data science has helped to make gerrymanders more precise in the last decades and can also help create fair maps as well. Algorithms can create thousands or even hundreds of millions of different maps. More than 99% of the maps that were randomly drawn by a computer were more neutral and more fair and less partisan than the maps that the politicians drew. Electoral reforms have also been floated as being helpful against gerrymanders. In Congress, Virginia Representative Don Bayer introduced the Fair Representation Act, which would make ranked choice voting, independent commissions, and multi-member districts the norm. As Americans await the results of the 2020 census, most states will continue to have state legislatures draw maps come 2021. Meanwhile, both Democrats and Republicans are actively trying to flip state legislatures, raising hundreds of millions of dollars for races that could decide the political future of the country. It's a redistricting arms race. Maps now matter so much that these parties are willing to invest hundreds of millions of dollars in them. It's a great reason why we need to really fix and reform this process.